fish aren't eating. What does that mean to me? So if, if I go to feed a fish and they don't eat and they ate the day before and they, you know, they've, they've never missed a meal except for today. Like that should be a sign. It's not like, you know, I just wasn't hungry. Like, yeah, kind of like your dog. Your dog doesn't really just do, ah, just not hungry today. Like animals want to eat every day on a schedule. You know that, uh, you know, we feed our dogs at five o'clock. At 4.30, they're doing the dinner dance already. Like clockwork, you can set a clock to them knowing fish are the same way, right? So when they don't eat, that should be a clue of, hold on, what's going on? What, I got to start looking at stuff, right? That's what it should mean to you. One of the first things I recommend is examine the food, right? So the first thing, um... If a dog wasn't eating, let's make sure we are not feeding them spoiled food. Or did we do something different? Is it a different food, right? So it's very common for us in the aquarium hobby to be, to be uh, not selling, but to be feeding expired food. And what I mean by that is once we open a package of food, which I never open packages of food in here because I never feed fish. There's no fish in here. But once this package of food is open, the clock starts. Think of like this flake food. I'm just going to use these analogies to make this easy, right? The minute I take the top off of this, it's like opening a bag of chips, right? We've got flake food. We've got chips. You open that bag. How long do you think you can feed those chips or eat those chips before they go stale? Maybe a couple of weeks if you're, you know, putting the top back on and keeping it good. Maybe a couple of weeks, right? Now imagine that we have all these fish oils and that type of thing that can go rancid. Like, oh, geez. Okay, we should be putting that in the fridge, really? Right? We might only get a week out of that. And we're doing that continually with our fish. Too often, I don't really have an example here, but okay, this might be a, a decent one. Too often, people will buy the giant bag going, well, this will last my fish six months, and it's a better deal than the smaller bag. I don't have a smaller bag in here, but if I did, I'd use that as an example. And the problem is, every day as I open this up, right, I'm letting in new oxygen, grabbing some food, feeding the fish, right, then I seal it back up. Every day we're losing nutrients out of here. And in extreme cases, we can actually get funguses, bacteria, uh, the, the oils going rancid. Yes, there's preservatives, but at a certain point we push past that, right? We put preservatives in our food all the time. We can push way past that. So... One of the, the first things I look at when a fish isn't eating is, hold on a second, how long have I had this food? You know, and so if it's been, in my opinion, this is my own personal rule that I like to live by, you know, manufacturers will tell you different, different fish store will tell you different, you know, and realize, take this with a grain of salt of, I'm a guy that sells fish food, but in my personal opinion, in a perfect world, all foods would be used up within one month of opening them. Now, if you use it up in a week, that's even better. But I'm a realist here, and I get that, like, well, I only have two aquariums. No package of fish food can I use up in a week or two. Like, I get it. Like, I totally get that. And so I think about a month is a good, loose baseline rule for most foods. Now, there are foods that do help you, like this one I'm seeing right here, the Sarah Onip tabs. In the 24 count, they come in this metal package each one you can feed separately and it doesn't compromise any of the other ones so that might make sense for you whereas like i i buy them in the gigantatron size because i feed so many at a time that would not make sense even though you're like wait but they're way cheaper per unit when i buy a billion at a time they'll all go bad before you ever feed them out if you only have one or two tanks so sometimes it makes more sense to spend more money right like the Costco effect. If I'm only going to eat, let's say in a month, my family uses this much mayonnaise, maybe I shouldn't buy a 55 gallon barrel of mayonnaise. Like maybe even though it's the same price, like maybe I don't need that. Right. Uh, so, so people are talking about some frozen fish foods and I was going to transition to that next anyway. So again, we have a fish that's not eating. Maybe they're not eating frozen bloodworms. One of the most likely cases with that is you're feeding your bloodworms and one day you just kind of, you set them down on the counter, you went and fed, and then the dog got out and you did a thing and pretty soon you came back and it's been 22 minutes and they're half thawed or maybe even more than half thawed. 
we don't really think about it. We take that metal package, we put it back in the freezer, but now we're constantly refreezing that and we can get a lot of spoilage going on there. So we definitely, with a frozen food, we really want to make sure it's staying frozen. We're not thawing it. Just like we wouldn't want to take chicken, right? If we went and bought chicken at the store, put it in the freezer. We wouldn't want to take it out, let it thaw till it's basically thawed out, then put it back in the freezer. And then the next day, like, ah, thawed out again. We Maybe we'll eat it today. Now nah, put it back in the freezer. Like, we're doing that continually with our frozen foods. And so we want to be mindful, like, in a perfect world, you take your frozen foods out right at the freezer, and you put the package right back in. Instead of like taking it to the tank and you're like, oh, I put it in the tank. Oh, this is making a sound. Hold on. And then you set it. A lot of times people set it on top of their aquarium light or the top of the hood, the warmest spot. And so you'll get a lot of melting going on while you're going, hey, the canister filter is making a sound. What's going on down here? Or, oh, look, that fish looks like he's got a, a bulging eye. You're just spending all this time not realizing you're passively cooking that frozen food. So these are all signs. One of the things why your fish might not be eating is food that is expired, gone bad. Maybe we got it to go bad without realizing it, but that's one of the first things. If a pet isn't eating, let's make sure the food we are offering is palatable to them and they would want to eat it, right? Uh, the next thing we would look for, I personally would look for, is aggression. So African cichlids, uh, epistogrammas, angels, anything with kind of a little bit of an attitude to it it's very common for them to shun a fish, right? And so you might be feeding and everyone's frenzying, but you know, Larry in the corner is not eating anymore. And it might be because every time he comes out, he gets chased. So if I knew the food was good, I would look towards an aggression issue. Like, is there, A, am I keeping fish that might show aggression? B, do I see any aggression? C, did I get food back to that fish. If that fish, you know, is here and the food lands right in front of it, still doesn't want to eat, and all the other fish on the other side of the tank, probably not an aggression thing right there. Still could be, but probably not. So I would look to aggression next, right? Then I would look towards environmental factors. Is it warm enough, right? Is the pH okay? Is there any bubbles? Like, do we have ammonia or could it be a med in the water? Like, what could be going on here? And the reality is, there are a lot of things that could be put Larry in the corner. Uh, some of the ones I wrote down real quickly that I've talked about with people and on the live streams in the past would be uh, shadows. So if we're making a shadow on the aquarium because we're backlit, we've got light behind us, maybe overhead lighting in the ceiling, and uh, you're feeding your fish and you create a shadow on the tank, sometimes we're scaring them. Uh, sometimes it might be we got a new TV and that new TV is louder or it's projecting its light more and it's basically causing strobing effects at the tank. Sometimes that, a subtle change, right? Could be time of year. I got the fish during winter, it's been dark outside, it's been fine, but now that we're in spring or summer, there's a lot of light coming through that window and it's casting shadows, right? Could also be a lighting thing in general, right? Maybe we have clown loaches or catfish that would much rather have subdued lighting. So subdued means lower light. And they don't want to come out and eat until the lighting is lower. So we might have plecos doing that and might be, oh, because I moved decorations or plants in the aquarium, now where the food lands is much brighter than it was a week ago, right? So we can be doing all these things that we don't think have a big effect, but actually could have very big effects. So, yeah. Electrical currents. Now, this is one that's not talked about very often. It's not super likely either, right? So that's why it's not talked about a lot. But I have run into it probably 10 times, you know, not even once a year, but maybe like, four times in the span of five years and then like nothing for a couple years and then like, oh yeah, there was a, a few times again. But what that means is usually it's a heater. Heaters is the most likely culprit and then power heads. Those are the two that I found to be legitimate stray current producers. And what that means is we put an electronic device in water and then there's a little bit of current. Maybe there's a little bit of short in the cord or maybe a little bit of water is getting to it or the heaters become cracked a little bit or the seals given way. And now it's making uh, some current and you'll get that little buzz sometimes when it's, when it's a lot of current, you'll get the buzz when you put your hand in or you can feel the hair on your arm standing up. 
but we get a lot of currents in our water, electrical stray current in our water that we can't even detect. But the fish can be very sensitive to that. Another sign, if you had that going on, you can get hole in the head disease or lateral line erosion. Both of those sometimes can be symptoms of stray currents. And it's much more prevalent in the saltwater world where maybe your corals aren't opening up as much. You could have some stray current there. Um, but in freshwater aquariums, sometimes fish not eating or being a little bit more reserved can be a sign or getting kind of mopey. And you can test that with uh, a multimeter. You can also buy these things called, um, is it just a, a probe? It's not a probe. Maybe it is a probe. Like they used to make these probes that you basically would plug in and it would, it was just a ground, a grounding probe. My brain couldn't get there, but grounding probe is what I meant. Uh, and you can get those for your aquarium and you can take out that stray current if there is any, but that's another thing that like, you know, I'm testing my water. My water's fine man, my fish should be okay. Like there's all these things we're actually not testing for all the time that while each one might only have 5% chance of being likely, if there's 20 different things, like that's a lot of chances for something to go wrong. You know, we're covering five of them with our test kit, but if we're missing another 10, we're not looking at a majority of the things that could be going on. So I know there's other reasons for fish not to eat, but those are the ones that, I can think of off the top of my head besides if you had African cichlids or some mouth brooding cichlids or mouth brooding bettas, they wouldn't eat if they were holding fry themselves. So there's all these little things, but in general, fish isn't eating. Start with, am I actually giving them good food that's not spoiled and it's ready to go? Is there no fish preventing them from eating? Is there anything physically wrong with that fish? Is there anything that'd be going on with my water? Usually all of these are little guessing games of like, just keep going down the list like, given a choice, I'm going to eat a taco. If I'm turning down tacos, you start asking questions. Why? Did you already eat? Do you not like that taco? Oh, is it too hot for you? Is it too cold? Like, what's wrong, right? You Like, what's wrong? You like tacos. You should be eating tacos. We need to play that same game with our fish. So 